Hey lovelies, so I'm gonna do a get ready with me, with you. And we're gonna talk about The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, parts one and two, reunion. Now let me tell you, I'm a die hard Real Housewives fan. Die hard. Um, I've been watching them since like 2008. I started with uh, watching, um, Real Housewives of Orange County. Gosh, why did that take me so hard to think, long to think of it? Started watching Real Housewives of Orange County. And just hold on. They have been into the Real Housewives for like so many years. And I don't have anybody to talk to about it because nobody that I know actually even likes the Real Housewives. So, I'm gonna talk to you guys about it. Because this season has been like crazy. Well, kind of. I don't know. Some of it I just feel they're like reaching for storylines. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, so let's start. Okay. So this season reunion, 13th reunion, starts off as always with the wives all in their dressing rooms and getting ready for the long day of the reunion. So if you watch the season, you would know that... The main drama was about this South Carolina trip that they took. Um, so and in South Carolina, they had a, um, what's it called? Dungeon party, a dungeon um, bachelorette party for Cynthia because she's getting married. So of course, you know, they got to celebrate. So they made the whole um, stage look like the dungeon or whatever, right? For uh, the scenery. Anyways, so um, Andy is too much like with playing into this because he asks Candy, who he's going to call mistress the whole night since that was what she, her role was in um, the bachelorette party. So he asked her, like, basically, how she wants him, if she, he should get on his knees or something like that. Like, Andy, you're doing too much, okay? And I love you, Andy, but you are doing too much. Okay. And speaking of Candy, like, I, I loved her outfit, but I was just was not feeling the hair. Like, I love your outfit, but the hairstyle, I don't know. It just wasn't, it wasn't for me. And I thought that Portia was the best dress. I thought her dress was gorgeous. Um, and of course, Cynthia, she's always bringing it. Like, do we even need to discuss that? No. <laughs> because we all know that Cynthia is always bringing that. So, anyhow, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So... They start talking about like quarantine and all that because that was like the major thing going on at the time was quarantine and how everybody like has gained weight and all that stuff, which I mean, yeah, I gained weight too. It's called DoorDash, Grubhub, like they were still delivering to me during quarantine. So of course, I gained weight. Um, read my notes, had to take notes. So then they, of course, bring up Kenya in her butt, as always. And it also, you know, it has to just come up. Like, I think every reunion, they talk about how she has, like, a fake butt. And, um, yeah, I just think it's kind of, like, overdone, guys. Do we have to keep on rehashing it? Truthfully, I think her butt's fake. I do. I always have. It's not my business. But I definitely think that Kenya has had a little bit of enhancement. Um, so, now they talk about Portia first, which uh, Kenya just has this look on her face the whole time during Portia's segment. And it just drives me nuts. Like, I don't know. I know that there's people out here that are die-hard Kenya Moore fans. 
And I get it, like, cause I mean, I have my people that I just like love, but there's just something about this woman and her hating all the time that just drives me freaking nuts. Oh, but this eyebrow is not looking good, guys. Ooh. Okay, anyways. So I'm like really proud of Portia because she did use her, um, how great her activism was um, this season with the Black Lives Matter and um, just all that she did for like the Breonna Taylor case down in Kentucky and how um, she really went out there and um, she really used her platform in such a great way, I thought. I thought... I just thought that she did a really great job with using her activism and her platform in such a great way down there. And then they, of course, you know, have to talk about her relationship with her baby's dad, Dennis. And I'm sorry, but Dennis to me, he just doesn't deserve Portia. Like, you don't cheat on somebody that many times, you know? And say that you like really care for her. Like, no, you don't, dude. Let's just be honest. Um, so then, you know, after they talk with Portia about her little bit that went on there, because you know, obviously a lot more went down with Portia this season if you had been watching, but that is, I guess, just to come later. So, anyways, so they did they didn't talk about the hot mess that is Freaking Mark Daly and Kenya Moore's relationship. Hot mess. Okay. So, for one, after the segment, Andy made me laugh so hard because, um, through in, in one of the episodes of the season, like, she went to call him. She, Kenya went to call Mark, her husband, and her number was locked. <laughs> so, Andy, of course, had to ask her, like, is your number still blocked? Well, why don't we call to make sure? Which I thought was... It was really funny. Um, and so, you know, like Kenya, during Portia's whole segment of talking, she was just, because she's just hating the whole time, right? But yet, her new little friend Toya, or LaToya, however you want to remember her as. But anyways, she remembered, Andy reminded her that, oh, do you remember that Toya was like telling people about your alimony? Um situation and you know Portia told her basically like we're not gonna go there you know and she halfway and just like you know gives Portia that credit for saying something for her but you know Kenya just she just can't you know just get off of hating on Portia like they just have had it out for each other since the beginning. Anyways, so, um, you know, of course, Andy asks a question because Portia and Dennis, even though they're not together, they are, you know, raising their child and putting her needs first, which is just wonderful. And Kenya's kind of like struggling with uh, Mark, with their daughter and stuff. And um, just co-parenting. So Andy was like, you know, don't you think that you could maybe learn something or whatever from um, Portia and Dennis? And she was, and you know, if, you, if you've watched The Real Housewives and you know how Kenya has always like hated how everybody else had a husband and she couldn't like ever use that, that phrase of just, well, I, you know, husband's different than, you know. A relationship blah 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 so of course she had to do that and be like well let's not compare my marriage to their relationship okay all he was trying to say was you know wouldn't you like to have basically like wouldn't you like to have that you know so I just know that she's been holding on to that forever because she's always wanted a little husband and I'm, I did hear, you know, I will say though that I am glad that Kenya and her mom are making progress because it, even though I can't stand Kenya, it is sad when I have seen the past seasons where she has tried to like go talk to her mom and her mom has like shut the door on her and 
like hasn't want, wanted anything to do with her. So I am glad to hear that things are getting better. And I just, I, speaking of Kenya, because we're still on her, I just can't stand how she um, is towards Drew. Like she's just so petty. And let's just be honest here. She was a little flirty with Drew's husband this season. We all seen it. We seen it, Kenya. And then, you know, she even has to go in for Drew talking about, well, your family isn't even on one, under one roof. Like, you know, your baby daddy is in prison or whatever. Like, really? Even if he was? Like, why would you, you know, have to even go in like that, Kenya? Like, because, you know, again, she wouldn't want somebody else doing that to her. But she does it to the other ladies all the time. And then she expects them to be like super nice. It's just, mm. you know, and then Andy brings up because she wore an Afri Native American outfit for Halloween, which of course she uh, got corrected real quick for that. And when he asked her about it, you know, she basically said it was her heritage. But then he asks her like what Native American heritage she has. And she doesn't even have an answer for him. She like kind of dances around the question. So, okay, Kenya. And then, you know, Portia brings up how Kenya always wants like for people to just have compassion and forgiveness for her, but she doesn't do that for other women on the stage, which is true. She always has a reason why you know, it should be more understood that she did this, that, or the other. But if the other women do it, it's like, that is so wrong, you know, rude, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, mm. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then they go and they flash back to Portia, like, because, you know, they bring up, like, the um, Underground Railroad. And I don't know if you saw Portia's first season of Atlanta, but if you have, and you know exactly what we're talking about, how she thought that the Underground Railroad at one point really went underground. And I'm glad though that she spoke so well because um, even on the Watch What Happens Live flashback, which, whoa, she looks so different. Isn't it so crazy how these housewives come in so natural their first season and then they get super glammed by their second season? Like, okay. So anyway, it was like she had natural hair and everything back then. Not that her go naked hair is not good. I mean, it works too, but it's just crazy like to see when they basically wear their like natural hair more than they did. Uh, I don't want to say fake hair, but you know what I mean? Anyways, extra hair, extensions, whatever. So, mm, excuse me. So like then, anyway, so Kenya has to call out Drew and say, well, Drew wore a Native American outfit for Halloween. And, um, you know, just basically had to come for somebody else when she was in the hot seat. And it just, I don't know. I would have much rather her just like been taking responsibility and keeping it on herself instead of deflecting and having to bring somebody else into it. So anyways, they talk about Drew and um, Ralph next, and Ralph is her husband. And of course, after they play their little segment, Andy, with his mincy self, has to ask them if they've been into any good beaches lately. Like, really, Andy? You know that that was an issue in the show because Ralph went to Tampa and then did not tell Drew, like, basically what went down there. Which, I gotta say, Ralph, I still am not cool with that. But anyways, so I, I, aside from that, though, I think Ralph's a really good role model. I mean, for him to be so supportive of Drew's um, child with a previous man, uh, Josiah, and really encouraging Josiah to, you know, go and have a relationship with his biological dad. And I just really got to commend Ralph because I think that he is a really good role model for, for Josiah. And then, you know, of course, they bring up um, 
Candy's daughter Riley's situation with her dad block. And if you have been watching Real Housewives for long enough, you know that that dude like pops in and out of Riley's life and Riley really doesn't want anything to do with him, you know? And Candy's always kind of been like just really good about being supportive of her daughter, which I love. But um, I guess the Candy got backlash because Riley took her dad um, to court for back child support. And let me tell you what, my biological dad dipped out on me and my mom and never paid child support for me. So good for you, Riley, for getting that back child support because you're an adult now. You probably really need those funds. And I don't know anybody's in a damn candy for it because um, she was just doing what was right by her daughter, getting money that he owed. I mean, we don't make babies by ourselves, you know? And he he needed the support. Riley, in my opinion, you know, it was way past overdue. So anyways, then it goes on to, you know, Drew busts out Kenya for retweeting um, an article about Drew's son, Josiah. The article said that he's cringy and Kenya goes and retweets it and doesn't understand why Drew is upset by that because, you know, like that's her child. Why would you retweet an article pertaining to a child? And you know what Kenya's excuse is? That Drew talked about her daughter's father, Mark, which is also Kenya's husband. And so Kenya felt justified to say something about a child or retweet about a child being cringy because of that. Girl, no. No. An adult and a child are two different things. And you should not be coming for children. I don't care. You shouldn't. It ain't right. So, anyhow. Um, so then, you know, Drew goes into talking about how basically Kenya has, like, flirted with her husband and stuff. Which, obviously, we saw that actually on the show. Because Kenya gave googly eyes. Like, girl, we saw you with Apollo. We saw you, um... Act inappropriately with other men before. Like, who are you trying to fool, Kenya? We saw you with them googly eyes. Hey, husband. Yeah, we saw you. So don't, don't front, girl. Don't front. And I always like cringe at those Apollo flashbacks that they showed because I remember watching those when they first aired and I was so uncomfortable because I'm like, girl, you should not be flirting with this man right in front of his wife like and you first and he does matter like mm -mm, not cool so anyways now they go on to bring in toya out and this is still part one so they bring toya out finally and let me say they have to show her in her dressing room and she says that you know like she makes up this big drama that drew made her feel uncomfortable because Drew had somebody bring her like vitamin C or something because I guess that Toya wasn't feeling well and Toya took it as like, oh, she's coming for me. I'm like, girl, maybe she was just trying to help you out. Not feeling well. She had some vitamin C, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. And then, you know, when she said something about it, saying, she like said, like, I got a cold, so she brought me vitamin C, and everybody's like, I thought you had a kidney infection. She goes, word for word. I have a cold, a kidney infection, a UTI, all of it. Like, okay. So then, of course, Drew calls her Petty Peachless, and I lost it, because I thought that was hilarious. Petty Peachless. So that concludes the... um the first part of the reunion. So of course, when they go into see, you now this is the second part, part two. So when they go in, they're already talking to LaToya because that's who we ended with. And then let me tell you, LaToya looks great. It's just like the top part of her dress, like I was just expecting a boob to fly out. Was anybody else? Because I was like, okay, anytime now, it's just gonna, but they stayed in there. I'm like, okay girl, maybe she had them taped down or something, I don't know, but. I don't know if mine would have, I don't know if mine would have stayed like that. Oops. Okay. So anyways, I just feel like LaToya had it out for Drew, like once 
she saw her because of the game. Like, they show the game and Drew's character on it and stuff. Like, I just felt like Toya had it out for her. Like, she was a fan of hers. But then, like, she also um, was, like, hating on her. I don't know. It was the weirdest thing, you know? So, anyways... I thought that her coming on after Drew for like her hair, like for one, I don't get it in the, these shows. Like what is it up with coming after people's hair? Like their edges and, um, you know, we all have had bad hair days. I mean, none of us always look good. I remember when Nene was on the show nicking for her hard. Now, let me say, I love Nene. You know, there's just something about her that I just will always love. And I know a lot of people didn't like her as much, like when she exited the show because of just, I, I guess her attitude wasn't the best. So let's just call it for what it is. And again, I love me some Nene, but I gotta, I gotta call it for what it is. So anyways, um, another thing that was shocking is that Latoya has three kids. I mean, I have three kids about the same age. Do we see, like, like that girl is like, work it, girl. I don't know what you're doing, but you look great, Latoya. I gotta say, your body does not look like you have three kids. And, um, I don't know. I just was really bothered by uh, how fixated um, Latoya was on Drew's hair this season. Like, I just meant, I don't know. I didn't get it. So then, um, now they talk about Latoya and Kenya because you know there's like there's some sexual tension there between those two. Uh, I got the vibe that they maybe dipped in each other's lady palms, and that's cool. I mean, that's I don't care. Again, not my life. It's not me. I don't mind. I don't care. But I don't know. There's just something between those two that I feel like something probably did happen. And then Latoya telling out, like, Kenya's alimony business, I thought was just wrong. Like, if that's supposed to be your girl, that's supposed to be your friend, you don't be telling out their business. You don't do that to people. It's not right. Especially something so private. You know? And then, okay, so they asked who was the auntiest, the auntiest aunt out of everybody, because, you know, it was, like, aunties and nieces. And... Somebody said Marlo. I want to say that Portia said Marlo or something. And I was like, uh, I think that Cynthia is the auntiest of all the aunts. Like, I don't know. To me, Cynthia just seems like auntie material, you know? But who do you think is the most auntiest aunt out of all them all? The niece's niece is Portia. <laughs> Portia. Okay. So... Marlo comes out, you know, she, she was looking good. I'll give it to her, you know. And she owned up. She said that she had, you know, light bulb or whatever. So go on, girl. Do your thing. You got to help. I mean, I don't know if her back was really injured from her nephews, like she said, or if she was. I mean, everybody, of course, that's like Kenya and her fake butt. It's like, Kenya, and if she has a fake butt, should I say. Like, everybody is saying it, but who knows if it's even true. So anyways, they, they start some up the South Carolina trip, right? Now, the first thing I want to say about the South, the South Carolina trip is that who cares what some grown women were doing? Some single, grown, consenting adult women doing. Like, who cares? Seriously. But we'll get into that. So they go on to talk about the South Carolina trip. And Kenya is the hostess. But she's like the worst hostess. She has no food in the house. She orders herself something to eat. Like, I don't know. It just bothers me. And then she brings her kid, but doesn't offer anybody else to bring their kids to come. Flies private, you know, makes you, has the other ladies fly in an airplane. And I don't know how much of this trip, like, the ladies actually plan out versus production. Like, I don't, obviously I'm not a real housewife. I don't know the basics of it. But regardless, somehow she ended up in a private jet. The other ladies float like regular commercial or however. So anyways, so anytime like Kenya 
or anytime Portia is speaking about anything with Kenya, like she just has so disrespectful, so smug, and just, it's just ridiculous. Because, um, you know, Portia spoke about that technically they don't bring kids like on these trips because it's supposed to be just like crazy. That's why Bravo does it. It's supposed to be like, all the ladies are in one confined place together and like, let's see when shit hits the fan kind of situation, right? So anyway, so you know, Kenya keeps bringing Brooklyn and um, even Candy says like very matter of factly, well, you know, actually production doesn't prefer people to bring their kids on trips. So I've always respected that the whole time Kenya's like, you can just tell she feels entitled to like just do like that she's just above everybody else and she can do whatever she wants and ugh. another reason why I just don't really like Kenya so and I just feel like like her whole story about why she took the private jet was such a bullshit excuse I at the end of the day you know, like she wanted to tell Drew that she was taking the private jet and then when Drew had basically held her accountable like, she wanted, mm, she wanted to flip and call Drew and Mark. Like, no. And then she also was talking how she was all nice to Drew and even offered her to wear shapewear with, like, any body issues that she was having. Like, girl, you are so wrong talking about somebody else's body. Who cares if somebody's wearing some shapewear? I wear some shapewear. Like, I don't know. And I know that, like, actually Drew is going through some health issues and stuff. It makes it just, like, even more catty of Kenya to just be like, again, she just thinks that she, her shit don't stink. That's really what it is. She just thinks that her shit don't stink. It does, boo. It does. <sighs> okay. So then they talk about Cynthia and how she got married during a pandemic. I'm not going to talk too much about this because, I mean, it is what it is, but... At the end of the day, she took the right precautions, you know, and uh, she said that nobody had ended up getting sick after that. And I'm pretty sure if I saw the pictures and I remember right, it was like outdoor and indoor. So, I mean, I'm sure that there was plenty of social distancing and stuff during this pandemic. So, I don't know. I don't think anything's wrong with it. But everybody has their own fears and opinions and feelings of it. So, I just respect what everybody feels. And, you know, I'm not going to get my panties in a bunch one way or another. Anyways, so now they talk about how, you know, because if you remember, right, Candy and Portia really haven't been that great because a few seasons back when this girl Phaedra was on the show, she like her and Portia concocted some lie that Candy was trying to rape Portia in a dungeon, which now Candy has really profited off of this sex dungeon stuff because I mean, look how many shows that she has done with it. So, I mean, I guess that's one way to embrace a rumor. Um, but anyway, so I feel like the dungeon kind of brought, you know, Candy and Portia together because Candy didn't give a shit what anybody was doing. Like, this is grown woman time. Like, you know, this is adult entertainment. And so I felt like, you know, that kind of vibe helped with her and Portia to get back on track. And again, who cares what a grown adult, consenting adults are doing together? Like, who cares? So I'm just glad to see that, you know, they could move forward, even if it was through the dungeon. <laughs> um, ironically, right? Isn't that kind of funny? Um, anyways, so then they talk about Bolo. Now, if you watch these episodes, you know, it was some freaky freaks. You saw them girls going crazy over that boy. Mm -hmm. So they talk about that. And, um, you know, just how all the girls were acting and stuff, which I thought all their like little lingerie clothes were cute that night. Kenya was doing too much. I still feel like, girl, you ain't got to bust it open and wide that many times. But whatever, whatever makes you happy with your thirsty ass. So, anyways, and then they start talking about, like, who mess with each other, which, again, consenting adults, who cares? But, you know, LaToya and Portia, you know, they got some freaks. They got freaky together. You could tell. And, you know, that's fine. Like I said, 
But uh, I think Kenya got a little upset by that. I do. I don't think Kenya liked the fact that Latoya was feeling Portia. And uh, so anyway, so Andy brings up how like he felt like those episodes were like liberating and just sexual freedom. And, and that's what it was supposed to be the whole time it was just a fun night, you know, letting your freak flag fly. And, uh, you know, Kenya couldn't have that because she just got to be in everybody's business. And always, I just feel like she always wants to find something negative to harp on or find somebody to like just constantly be right with the choices that they make as a grown adult. But then if she, whatever she does is supposed to be just fine. You know, that's just, I guess, how Kenya rolls. So anyways, um... Towards the end of season two, or the part two reunion, Marlo kind of comes for Portia about their friendship and stuff. And I don't even know what to think of it because to me, I felt like Portia really didn't have much. Like, I felt like Marlo was looking for an issue to have because she was cool with Kenya again and Kenya and Portia aren't that cool. So I felt like Marlo wanted Portia to have an issue, but Portia really didn't. So I don't know. I don't know. But I guess there's, so there's gonna be part three, which I wasn't expecting uh, there to be a third part, but I'm kind of excited because I wanna see what's gonna happen in this third part. And I'm gonna have to do another get ready with me, with you guys, because I love talk. I'm like, this is fun. I wanna talk more about housewives. All right. Well, I think I'm ready because there's nothing more to talk about. That was the whole two part, first two parts of the reunion. Uh, tell me what your thoughts were of it though, because I am dying to hear somebody else's <laughs> opinions. Um, if you're a big Kenya fan and you're like irritated because I talked about her so much and probably not the best ways because she just drives me nuts. Don't take offense. I'm sorry. The girl just drives me nuts. Okay. Um, anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed getting ready with you. My hair is kind of doing its own thing today, but that's fine. And, um, I hope that you guys all have a, you know, a great day. And I'm going to make another video next week to conclude this. And I might actually make another video, um, because the Dallas Housewives reunion is going to air, I think, tonight. I want to say, I always watch it the next day because I use the Bravo app. So, I don't watch it live. I... I just can't deal with all the commercial breaks and all that. So I normally watch it the next day. But anyways, so I'm going to break that one down with you as well. And um, there's probably going to be more to come because I like getting ready, doing my makeup, my hair, you know, looking presentable. And I like talking housewives. So I will definitely be back. If you have stayed watching this whole time, thank you so much. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I'm probably going to be doing these a lot more regularly. Um... So just stay tuned. All right, bye.